Hi everyone. In this lesson we want to look at how we can factor and solve equations involving trinomials where the leading coefficient is 1. So here's an example of a trinomial whose leading coefficient is 1. Notice that uh, in this case I can't solve an equation because there's no equal sign. All right, So all I can do is factor this and the way we uh, factor trinomials is as two binomials. And I know I'd have to have a y times a y in order to get the y squared. And then I have to think about the numbers I'd put in right here that would multiply to give me 27. And then at the same time would combine with the y's when I multiply back out with the outers and inners in order to get the 12y in the middle. So if I think of 27 as 9 times 3, um, if I were to put a 9 here and a 3 here, uh, that would give me 27, and that would also give me 3y and 9y. And if I were to have a plus on each one of those, a uh, plus 3y and a plus 9y makes a plus 12y, and then a plus 9 times a plus 3 gives me the 27, I'm able to factor that. You can see if I FOIL this back out, I will get my original trinomial. Okay, and that's really the way we factor is simply by a little guess and check method and being able to quickly foil in our heads to see if we've done it correctly. Now if we move to the next example here, uh, this is an equation and the way that we solve a, a trinomial equation, any polynomial equation, is to get 0 on one side. So I'm going to bring the 16a over on the left by subtracting 16a from both sides. And then I'm going to uh, notice there's a common factor of 2. I can do one of two things. I could either factor that 2 out, or since it's an equation, I could also divide both sides by 2. Uh, I like to divide both sides if it's an equation because then it just goes away and it's not there to confuse me later on. Okay? So if I were to divide both sides by 2, that would give me a squared minus 8a plus 16 equals 0, and then I can factor that. That actually looks like a perfect square. a minus 4 times a minus 4 equals 0. So I factored that, and then I have to go a step further since it's an equation. I want to set each of those factors equal to 0. So either a minus 4 is equal to 0, or the other factor is, well, it's just the same thing, right? So I'm going to get a is equal to 4, or a is equal to 4, and uh, so the only answer is a equals 4. All right. Now notice if I would have uh, just done this slightly differently, if I wouldn't have thought to divide the 2 out, I would have had 2 times a squared minus 8a plus the 16 equals 0. And then I would still have had to factor this as a minus 4 and a minus 4. And then I would look, and I actually have three numbers multiplied together to give me 0. But obviously this first number 2 is not 0, right? So it would have to be either the a minus 4 equals 0, which is the same thing we got here, or the second a minus 4 equals 0. All right, so let's go on to the next example here. Here I have a cubic equation, and uh, I still want to get 0 on one side. I like to take all my terms to the side that's going to make a positive leading uh, coefficient. So I'm going to take the 56x plus x squared on the other side. I'll leave me 0 on the uh, right-hand side here. So I'll get x cubed minus x squared minus 56x and then I have to factor this and I notice that there is a common factor of, of a x so let's factor that out and that leaves me a trinomial that does have a leading coefficient of 1 and that's going to be uh, uh, the easiest sort of trinomial to factor so let's factor that a little further I'm just going to bring the x down below it, and then I'll leave, make some parentheses to factor the trinomial as two binomials. I know it has to be x and x to get x squared. To get 56, well, the ones that come to mind are 7 and 8, but I have to keep in mind they have to somehow combine to give me the negative 1 in the middle. 
And if I think of 7 and 8, well, sure enough, they, they do differ by 1 if I do it just right. So I'm going to write 7 and 8 first of all, and then I'm going to worry about the signs here. Notice that if it's a negative 56, the 7 and 8 are going to have different signs. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. And the middle term has to be negative. So I'm going to put the negative on the 8, that's the big factor, and the positive on the 7. So if I, if I multiply out these two binomials, I'll get x squared, and that's right here. And then the outers are a negative 8x. The inners are 7x. Combined makes negative 1x in the middle. And then the plus 7 times a negative 8 makes negative 56. So I think I factored that correctly. Now I have to solve the equation. I have this equation. I actually have three numbers multiplied together to give me 0. So either the first number is 0. And you don't want to forget that. That's the one that students typically forget. So either x is 0 or x plus 7 is 0. And if x plus 7 is 0, that would make x be a negative 7. Or the third number would be x minus 8, so that would make x equals 8. Okay, on our last example here, we uh, have a binomial times a binomial equal to negative 5. Now, if this was equal to 0, this would be really easy, right? I'd know that z would have to be negative 4 and z would have to be 2. Um, but it's not equal to 0, it's equal to negative 5. And, and when you have two, two numbers multiplied together to give you 0, one of the numbers has to be 0. But if two numbers are multiplied together to give you negative 5, it isn't the case that one of the numbers has to be negative 5, right? Because the numbers could be like, like 10 and negative a half. Um, and so, so that's not going to work to solve it. You have to get 0 on one side. So the only way I can solve this is I actually have to multiply this out. z squared minus 2z and 4z is 2z minus 8. And then I bring the minus 5 over so that I do get 0 on that side. So that would be z squared plus 2z minus 3. And then I'll have to refactor this z and z, and then the factors of 3, well, that has to be just 3 and 1, and I want to end up with a plus 2 in the middle. So I'm going to put a plus on the bigger factor, the 3, a minus on the 1, and then just double check, z squared minus 1z for the outers plus 3z for the inners makes 2z in the middle here, and then minus 3. So if I set each of those factors equal to 0, I'd get z plus 3 equals 0, so z is negative 3. And uh, from this factor, if I set that equal to 0, I'd get z equals 1. And you can check that. If I plug, for example, 1 up here, I'd get 5 here, and negative 1 here, and 5 times negative 1 works. Okay, and you could check the minus 3 as well. If I plug in minus 3, I'd get 1 here, and negative 5 here. And that 1 times negative 5 makes negative 5. Okay?